Hello guys, this is Alvar Dura, the Tone Junkie, and today I'm gonna show you step by step how to perform a full setup on a Floyd Rose electric guitar. And if you follow me, by the end of this video, your guitar will play the way you want it. Coming right up. I don't know about you, but I know that it's very frustrating when your guitar doesn't play the way you like it. And it's even worse when you have to pay somebody to do the setup and when you get your guitar back, it's still not right. I had this problem with my first guitar for several years. It was a Jackson Kramer copy that played horribly and the Floyd Rose never stayed in tune. The internet was in early stages and it wasn't a lot of information available about it so I had no choice I had to experiment with my own guitar and after 15 years of doing setups I am ready to tell you all the secrets I've learned what I want with this video is that you finally understand how the guitar works I've tried a couple times to organize my ideas in order to achieve this but it's hard and English is not my first language, so it becomes even more difficult. Seriously, I'm gonna put all my effort. I will try to use the simplest tools available and I will take you step by step so you can follow the procedure. I will also tell you the reasons why you have to do things in a certain way, what happens when you tighten screws here and there, things you have to avoid, etc. Since I'm going to be doing a lot of explaining, I'm going to break it into two parts. Part one is about the preparation, everything you need to know and need to have. And part two is going to be about the actual procedure. Um, this part is about all you need to have and what you need to understand before you start doing the setup. We need new strings. Uh, for standard tuning, I use 9s or 10s. Uh, most of the times I use 10s because I like the tension. And for half step down, I use 11s. For drop C, maybe 11s or 12s. It depends on your style, on your guitar, etc. For this video, I'm gonna use Ernie Ball 10s. Um, second, you need some measuring tools, some sort of ruler. Um, this one measures on 32s of an inch if you have something that reads 64s of an inch even better and if you're using like you know millimeters uh, you can get one that measures between 5 to 10 millimeters that would be enough and this is basically to measure the the string action and it will be useful as well for for the, the pickup height. Then we also need filler gauges. Depending on the thickness, you have a number there. I got this one in an auto part store. But if you don't have one, since we just need a thickness reference, you can have a, a business card. Because this thickness is about whatever you need to set the neck relief and I will explain that later. We also need screwdrivers, Zip Phillips and flat ones for the springs and for the pickup adjustment. The Allen wrenches are gonna be for the, um, for the truss rod adjustment and for the studs, bolts or any other um, Allen screw. You may also need some rags to clean and protect your guitar and you need a wooden block like this one, but if you don't have anything like this, you can you can use some post-its. And this is basically to block the bridge. We're gonna stick this between the the bridge and the and the wood of the body to block the bridge. So I like to use post-its because I mean you can stack them and then you can get the right, you know, the right thickness to block the bridge in the perfect angle. You might also need some, you know, 
extra tools like the um, string winder is not necessary but, but it's very useful a capo I will explain later how we're gonna use this for the setup but if you don't have one don't worry about it and uh, clippers to just to clip the strings all right so how the guitar works as you see here this is an ugly drawing of a guitar that I made myself and um, there are several elements that define the setup the first one is the action and you set the action using the bridge studs if you tie them up the bridge will go down and the action will go down if you loose them up the the bridge will raise and the action will raise then we have the truss rod and the truss rod allow us to set the neck relief but first what is the truss rod the truss rod is a bolt that goes inside the neck the neck needs to fight against the string tension when they are in tune as you see here the strings pull this way so the neck will be you know under stress on this direction so it will tend to to bend a little bit so when you tie the truss rod the neck will get flatter if you tie it more maybe you can get a back bow which is very bad i will explain you later and if you loosen it will bend up because of the string tension okay so um this allows us to set what is called the neck relief the neck relief is this light curve you need to have on the on the neck so you avoid fret boss on the first frets so this happens because of the geometry of the guitar when you press down the string to make it to the fret a triangle is created the string needs some room to vibrate without hitting the next fret if the fretboard is completely flat and you fret on the lower frets if you if you see here the distance between the string and the next fret on this situation is larger than when you fret on the higher frets so when we have a completely flat neck the guitar will tend to have fret buzz on the higher frets because it has less room to vibrate so to compensate for this is why we need to have a small curve in the neck which is called neck relief so the strings on the higher frets have the same room to vibrate as the ones when you fret on the lower frets these two the string action and the neck relief are responsible for the playability of the guitar then another thing that is involved is the nut height normally on Floyd Rose guitars you don't get huge problems with those if the nut is too low you will get fret buzz only when you play open strings if it's too high then it will be very hard for you for you to fret bar chords on the higher frets so the only thing you can do is if it's too high you need to send it to attack because you're gonna need to some way remove some of the wood on this area to bring it down or if it's too low you can put some shims underneath it so you can bring it up but nothing more than that there's another adjustment that is called micro tilt which is in this area it's gonna be it's a ball that is right here behind the um, you know on the neck pocket and some guitars have this fine adjustment to vary the angle created between the body and the neck so you, so you can do so you can move the neck to set it this way or this way but not all the guitars has it the next will be the intonation of the guitar and it means that the string sound 
in tune along the fretboard. This is achieved moving the bridge saddles to match the pitch that is produced when you fret a note. I will explain this later in detail. And for last, the bridge angle. Here we try to set the bridge parallel to the body and for this, the tension of the strings when they are tuned pitch have to be the same as the tension of the springs that are in the back of the guitar. So this way, the bridge can float parallel to the body while the strings are in tune. This system was created this way. So when you use the Floyd Rose, the bridge can move up and down and come back to the initial position while keeping the tuning in pitch. As you can see here, the setup is about finding the perfect relationship between all this, the string action, the neck relief, the bridge stability, and the intonation of the scale. So we can have a guitar that plays nice and sounds nice, in tune and without fret boss. So once we have everything we need and we understand what are we going to do, I recommend you to follow this procedure step by step. Number one, it will be remove the strings and clean. This is a normal step. You can check out my previous video where I clean this guitar in depth. The link is in the description of this video. As long as you clean, oil the fretboard and remove the dirt is fine. So, to remove the strings is very easy. You just need to loose all the strings, remove the, the bolts on the knot, and then you finally lift the bridge, loosen the, the screws, and you remove all the strings. Okay and make sure you finger tie these ones because this metal block right here is very easy to get lost so I recommend you to finger tie this because you're gonna be flipping the guitar around and you don't want to lose them believe me I've done it before so to be able to set the next straight you need of course to have the correct Allen range. So what you're going to do is look from the bridge towards the knot and make sure all the frets are aligned across the neck. It doesn't have to be perfect because this is just the starting point. Alright, I'm going to show you three ways to put the strings. The first one is the one I use. What I do is I align the hole of the tuner in the direction of the string. I pass the string through and you bring it a couple inches away or two tuners away. First, left hand pull up and make an angle right here, okay? Then you turn it 180 degrees. So once you have the strings like the string like this, you need to create a right angle at this point so you can get good tuning stability. With my right hand, I pull hard and create that angle. You see, I'm pulling with my right hand and I'm pulling up with my left hand. So keeping, keeping the tension with your right hand, you start winding. So see, when you get here, the next turn is gonna be underneath the previous one. So this way, as the strings start 
turning around the the, the tuner the all the turns will push up the end of the string so this way it will block itself see so this is the way I do it alright the second way is just like the first one you set the the tuner hole in the same direction of the string pass the string through you grab the string a couple inches away bring them back to the point and then before you turn it off like the previous way what you're gonna do is you're gonna with your right hand you grab the string and you give one turn on top of the left hand you twist this one up then you start turning so basically what this way does is that the first turn it would be on top of the end of the string and the rest of them will be below so this way the end of the string will be pressed you know from both sides so that is why it's called the locking way so there you have it okay so that's the second method and the third method, it would be the reverse one. This is gonna be at the tuner, so you just pass it through in the opposite direction. There you go. And you start winding. You just have to be careful to put the string, the turns underneath the ball, the ball end. A lot of people use this method. I don't like it because I think it's, it's going to scratch the the tuner surface but I mean it's up to you it's just another way to do it so we're going to put the first and the last string there are several type of bridges the, the my first guitar was kind of different because you, you needed to pass the string through a hole right here and this one wasn't a bolt it was more like a like a small pipe so you pass the string through and the string got locked the, the moment the string ball hit the you know the, the end of the bridge this one is the traditional system which this bolt presses the string right here using this metal block so in this case, since we are going to put the string using the first method I showed you before, um, so we're going to clip the, the bolt end. You got to bring this way back and make sure the string is getting inside another hole that is right under the, the metal block, so this way you're making sure that the string is gonna get very tight in there. First method was to pass the string through the hole in the same direction. Now the string is on tension, a couple inches away from the, from the tuner. Bring it back, left hand, twist it up, half a turn. You have it this way, 180 degrees, push hard to make the, the right angle. You see what I'm doing here with my right hand? I'm keeping the tension. I don't know if you're able to see, all right? Keeping the tension, the string is going through the nut. And you make sure every turn is going under the previous one. Put a little bit of tension in the last string. Pass the string through, calculate a couple inches away. On this string, maybe one and a half inch away. Bring it back, twist that up with the left hand. 180 degree turn, right hand. Push hard to make the right angle. 
at this very end and then keeping pressure turn and turn and make sure every turn goes under the previous one put a little bit of tension okay so our next step is going to be to block the bridge turn the guitar around if you see I, I leave just one spring and as I said before you just need to put a block in this area in this space right here I have this block but you can use something like you know like several post-its this bridge have to be completely parallel to the body like this Right, so we have it this way, stay down, and, and the bridge is completely parallel to the body. So I'm putting this tape because the block is going to be there for a while. This one's locked, we have a little bit of tension on the strings, and we're going to set the action. The action is something that is, you know, it's a preference, it's up to you and what we're gonna do first is to set like starting point you you don't need to tune the the strings to pitch for that we're just getting an idea of the height of the strings if you have no clue check online and look for factory specs let's say for me the one that works fine is 464 of an inch to 564 on the bass side and 364 on the treble side you gotta do it this way you put the guitar like this 12 fret depending on the specs you were looking for it will say that you gotta measure at a different a, a different location and then we check for fret boss from 12 fret up to the 24th or 22 depending on your guitar you see this one I think is too low because it's I'm getting some fret boss why we take just this part of the fretboard into consideration is because this is the, the part that is mostly affected by the studs and since I want to raise the action I have to loosen this screw so what I'm gonna do first is to remove a little bit of the tension on the strings because I don't want to damage the blade that makes contact against the stud because that will affect the, the tuning stability so I gotta loosen the screw way better see I'm, I'm not getting the same fret boss as before I'm gonna bring it a little bit higher anyway there you go way better bring it up a little bit so, now fret boss, you see here the action is quite in like normal range. Maybe the lower E is a little bit high, but we will find out later. Number six is to put all the strings and set them to pitch we're gonna tune it to pitch you need a tuner for this as I forgot to say before you should do this on playing position but for this purpose of this video now we have them to pitch I mean sort of a ballpark double check the the bridge is parallel to the body
we need to adjust the neck relief. As I said before, the neck relief is this, is this light neck curve that is necessary so the strings don't bust when you play between frets 1 to 10 approximately. If you remember, I told you to adjust the neck to be straight at the beginning when we didn't have any strings on. After we put the strings and tune them to pitch, all this tension will bend the neck a little bit, which is totally fine. How we measure the neck relief? For that we need a cable, something that allow you to press at the first fret. It could be your sister or your mother. The rule is this one. You set the capo on the first fret, you press on 15th or 17th fret, and then you check the gap that is around the 7th fret. I don't know if you can see it in the camera. But this gap right here, there's a... See, there's a small gap. That gap is what we call the neck relief. Some people and brands, they um, they have different measures measurements for that. Um, I like to say my guitars around 12 to 13 because I don't like string bus at all. So you see if I press the 17th fret, around the 7, fits down there. Now, when you have a, a neck relief, you have also to look for fret buzz between fret number 1 and number 10. Nothing. Nothing. I have I have no fret boss. I see the action can be a little bit higher, but but we can always go back and lower the action using the bridge. So for now we are on the right direction. So what happens if you get fret buzz between frets 1 and 10? This means that your neck is too straight. The relief is not enough. So it also depends on how good your fret leveling is. Following the rules, you gotta loosen the truss rod counterclockwise to get more neck relief, more curve. If you're gonna tie or loosen the truss rod, make sure that you just go an eighth of a turn or maybe a quarter of a turn. Then you can repeat the process until you get no fret boss. If you don't find a way to get rid of the fret boss, then you're gonna need to take your guitar to attack because most likely you have a fret leveling problem or something else. The other situation would be that you don't get fret boss between frets 1 to 10 and that means that then you're, you're good to keep going. The goal is to, to have the neck as straight as possible without getting fret boss in this area. Then as I said before, the action got a little bit higher so we need to double check that. I think I can I can set this neck a little bit flatter than this C13 or 0.33 millimeter is getting is getting down here just a quarter of a turn or an eighth of a turn. Let's double check it again. See the business card fits in there. If I use the gauge and it fits in there, if I go on the treble side. So now I'm happy with my action and I'm happy that I don't have fret boss all across the fretboard. Now 
we are finished with the playability part of the setup and we're gonna get into the um, intonation part or the, the sound part. So part number nine is the intonation and this is the adjustment you make on the scale of each string to suit the position of the frets. This way you're able to get the right pitch note on all the strings on every fret you play. Setting the intonation of the Floyd Rose can be a pain in the ass, actually is the step that I hate the most. In general, the saddles of your bridge should look like this or so when they are properly set. If you feel your guitar sounds with a weird pitch when you play on the higher frets, most likely you need to check on that. For this you need a tuner, I recommend this chord. I got it for four bucks on Craigslist seven years ago and I have changed batteries just once, so it works perfectly. The way I do this is, once it's tuned to pitch, I play the 12th fret harmonic, which should be to pitch and then I compare the harmonic with the fretted note of the 12th fret. You see the harmonic is on pitch and the, the fretted note is kind of sharp. So in this case we need to move the bridge saddle. I gotta say that to make it more accurate you should do this on plate position but for the purpose of this video I'm gonna leave the guitar here on the table. When you fret the note you don't need to press too hard or too soft. You don't force the, the, the note to be sharp or flat, okay? You just try to do it as hard as you would normally do it. The rule is this one. With the string tuned to pitch, if the fretted note is flat, you move the saddle to the left, closer to the nut. If the fretted note is sharp, then you move the saddle to the right, farther away from the nut. I also suggest you could take a picture of the bridge and write down the results of the intonation on all the strings so you know which saddle you need to move and in which direction you have to do it. Okay, so let's start. First string is to pitch. Now the 12th harmonic, it should be in pitch. Then we play the fretted note. And it's a little bit sharp. So in this case, we need to move the saddle to the right, but you're gonna fight the string tension. And to avoid doing that, I recommend you lose the string so it is easier for you to move the, the saddle to the right. So let's do it. In this case, what I always do is I try to bring the saddle as far as I can, right? You see, I bring it over here. Why? Because if I'm going on the on the opposite direction that I need to move the saddle to the left, the string tension is gonna help me is gonna help me move it on this direction. I always do it this way. So let me put tension back and tune it to pitch. All right, I have it tuned to pitch. 12 harmonic to pitch to pitch. <laughs> I got lucky with this one. I just got on the right on the right spot. Let me tighten it up a little bit. That's fine. So Following what I said before, you know, the position of these saddles, I can assume if this one is correct, this one should be wrong. We're gonna double check. 12 harmonic to pitch. A little bit sharp, I knew it. How I knew it? Because this saddle should be a little bit behind the first one.
mouth fit, 12 harmonic, 12 fret and note. See? In this case, I went too far because now I'm flat. Before I was sharp. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is remove a little bit of the tension, press the saddle with my left hand, and unscrew this bolt here. And when it started moving, I'm gonna stop. Turn it up, tune to pitch, harmonic, fretted note. I'm a little bit off. Do it again. Right strings to pitch, 12 harmonic. Twelve fret note. Oh. Gotta bring it back a little bit. String tune to pitch. Harmonic. Fretted note. Same pitch. So this you gotta do it with all the strings. I know it's annoying and you need a lot of patience, but that's the way to do it, man. All right, guys, uh, I think I have it ready. We're going to lock the, um, the nut. You gotta put it this way with the screw. But before we tie them up, you can set the, the fine tuner screws that are on the bridge halfway so you can have room either for increase the pitch or decrease it and after you tighten these ones too if you have a string retainer it is always good to set it at the proper angle so when you lock these uh, blocks you don't change the pitch too much once you have them um, all in tune of course this is not the playing position but they were in tune. Um, you just tie the um, the locking nuts, and then once it's locked, you double check the pitch. It shouldn't change too much. And if you need to make a fine adjustment, that's what you have the the fine tuners for. All right, this is our last step. And as I mentioned before, uh, we untie these um, screws and remove a couple of, of springs. So we are going to put them back. This is the moment where you put a piece of foam under the springs so you can avoid some weird noises, reverb noises. And you remove the tape. Now what we do is we're gonna tie them up and we check when the block gets loose. I always try to keep this blade parallel to the body. Some people they do it, you know, angled, but I, I don't find any reason for that. Now it's done. So this way, see, it's completely parallel to the body. And for last, we just need to measure the peak of height. And on this matter, there are no rules. What I can give you is some ballpark values that you can use as a starting point.
For example, I use 432s for the neck pickup and 332s of an inch for the bridge pickup. And the way you do it is this one. You press last fret of your guitar and then you measure the distance between the lower part of the string and the pickup. That's the way you do it. So you measure 432s right here and 332s on, on the bridge. On each side, you gotta do the same on the treble side and the bass side. Some people like to, you know, set the pickups at different highs just to have it like more more output on the bridge, for example, that was very common. I don't like to do it that way. I prefer to have them the same output and just to have a different tonality depending on the position you select. After you finish these steps, you need to stretch the strings like this. And you need to stretch the springs of the Floyd Rose like this. And you need to tune back to pitch as many times you need. And then double check the string action, double check the neck relief, double check that the bridge remains parallel to the body, the intonation, double check that you're not getting any fret buzz along the fretboard, and make whatever tweaks you need to make until you get the guitar the way you always wanted it. If you have done the setup along with me watching the video, then congratulations. If you haven't done it, at least I hope that you are ready to put that fear aside because the only way to learn something is actually doing it. Well guys, there's nothing more to say. I'll be here for your ideas or questions. Just leave them in the comments. Share this video with your buddies because we all deserve a guitar that plays right. And don't forget to subscribe. I'm Albert Dura, the Tone Junkie, and next time I'm coming with more.